Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today's conversation is with Prince in the afterlife. If you're interested in hearing more or learning more about Prince from the afterlife, I would encourage you to visit the purplemedium.com website and view the blog. And you can go back to 2016 and listen to uh, just a whole ton of audios and read blog posts from my work with Prince in the afterlife. We've had a lot of connection and it's because of my connection with him that has really encouraged me to create this Above Life channel and offer the opportunity to connect you with other well-known spirits in the afterlife in addition to Prince. So today is Prince. And I actually wrote down some, I actually have some um, questions written down to talk to him about very specifically. I think you're gonna enjoy this. All right, so I'm gonna take a second. It's just gonna be conversation style. So I'm just gonna take a second to calm my energy down. He doesn't, he gets a little, um, he's hypersensitive to me. <laughs> I'm hypersensitive maybe. Yeah, maybe that's more like it to the energy and so if I my energy is too tense in my body or if I'm trying to be too business like or too professional he really just calls me on it he's like just relax be be who you are you know so okay so I'm gonna relax myself I have some specific questions for you today though all right so I'm gonna ask Prince to come in be present <laughs> okay all right, I can, I mean, I can feel him. He's funny because I feel like he's literally in like a little dressing room and he's like switching clothes kind of thing. Like, well, what do you want me to wear? Kind of thing. Like uh, he's being kind of funny because I connect very clairvoyantly, which means I use my third eye to see and very visual. And so what he wears matters to me. Okay, so he's coming out. Um, he's being kind of funny, which he is. If you've seen my other channels with Prince, um, he likes to poke fun at me a little bit and just play around. He's a silly, he likes to play around. And which I really appreciate. I love that humor, that sense of humor and playfulness. And so <laughs> he's got a this big white hat. It's not a fedora. It's different. It's bigger, really big. It's like a pimp hat <laughs> on, but it's white, not purple. It's not red. I've seen red ones. I've seen purple ones. It's white. And it's got like this leopard print lapel on it. And then it's got this big like brown feather thing on it, kind of plume coming out at the top. He's got like a white suit on, like like he looks like, you know, somebody from a movie where you'd see somebody from heaven, the gates of heaven, and be like all businessy white suit, but then he's got this pimp hat on. <laughs> so he's like, how's that? Yeah, does that work for you? <laughs> like, yeah, that, great. Okay, come on in, sit down. Make yourself comfortable in spirit form. <laughs> all right. He's like, all right, what are we going to talk about? That's his clue or his cue to me that we're, he's ready. He says, what you want to talk about? That's what he says. Today, I'd like to specifically talk about your fans. I know the term fan is a little touchy because I know that referring to it as fan can be um, maybe a little bit disrespectful from your experience. And so, but that's the term I use. That's, uh, I don't mean any disrespect to anybody who's watching either, but I'm gonna say fan. So about your fans, your fam, um, people love you. Like they love you. They're, they're fiercely dedicated and devoted to you to your music, to your legacy, to your memory. They are like, your fans are intense. I'm just gonna be honest. Some of you guys are intense. I know because I get emails, like really long emails and um, sometimes hate mail. I mean, I, I know that your, your uh, fans really just fiercely love you. And so I would love for you to talk about that a little bit. Why? I mean, you're, you're uh, a great guy and everything to hang out with in the afterlife, but what is the deal? What's the the big uh, magnetic attraction or something? What kind of, what kind of, what's going on with that? Like, why do you think that is? He's like, what's not to love? Now he has red on, a red suit, like Valentine's love, you know. What's not to love, he says. What's not to love? He's very, and then the word sexy comes in. And I am so not attracted to Prince in that way. I'm just gonna be real upfront. It's like, he's like a brother to me. So it's kind of weird <laughs> when he's like, oh, trying to be all sexy, you know? Just like, you know, um, like his shirt is unbuttoned and you know, um, he says that there's definitely a sexual energy around him and he says sex appeal. And 
he's sharing that when he first began his career and he was young and really um, he, there was a lot of sexual energy that he expressed and shared and and he could just do that like he was free to do that on stage and um, very very sexual energy which I know like intellectually but he's talking about it he's talking about that sex appeal and he's saying that he he, he feels like it gave people permission to liberate themselves, to not feel so restricted or confined in their body as a whole. And he's sharing that it gives people permission to, to be okay with their bodies, to celebrate their bodies, to dance how they feel like dancing and not worry about what other people are thinking or looking at of them. They're just feeling, it's about, he's sharing, He's sharing about how that energy, that charged energy, just feels like freedom to be your human self. But um, he's not using the word human. The word would be more body, to be comfortable. Not even comfortable, that's not the word. He's like to be free in your body, to be free in your body. That's what the sexual energy is about. And he says, and that's, you know, and that's a maturity thing too. As you get older, he's like, Bridget, as you you know, as you get older, you get more comfortable in who you are and you're not willing to put up with a lot of crap from outside sources or other people or even image or images you have of yourself. You're not, you're not willing to put up with a lot of stuff. And so when you're younger though, you have this deep, there's this huge desire, this just deep urge to just break out and just break out of your body and to utilize the body to do that is really quite beautiful. And he's like, that's very artistic to do that. So I'm going to share with you something interesting. So in this conversation with him, I feel like I'm getting information like in a big file box and we're unpacking it. And so it's not like a word to word or, or sentence to sentence kind of thing right this moment. It feels like I'm connecting with him clairsentiently. So that means um, in the heart space or feeling, sensing information and processing it that way. So I literally feel like I get a big file box and then I'm pulling out the files and I'm unpacking the ideas or the concepts that he's sharing with me. So it's not a word for word thing. I'm not utilizing the specific languages, language or words he may choose, um, but I'm explaining to you what he is sharing with me. So I hope you can feel that energy. I'm sure with the that uh, that supercharged sexual energy, you can probably feel that, right? Whoa, it's like, but it's interesting because it's not like a, a turn you on kind of a thing. It's not really that sexual, actually. It's quite fascinating to me. It feels primal. That's how I would describe it, Prince. That's exactly how I would interpret it. It's a kind of this primal, like a divine feminine primal goddess energy, freedom to be your wild self and not, not living under any kind of um, um, shackles, you know, like not being held back or in chains, just very primal. And it's really not about sex. It's more about, and it, it's a little bit about gender and, and crossing boundaries that were traditional in the mind created in society, um, having it be more in, intentionally breaking through borders. I'm going to use that word on purpose, borders of gender. And I know you were really known for that, but it feels like you, that's the energy that the lesson from that um, especially your early on work, that is the message I'm getting is like um, access that core passion within you, that desire, those dreams that you have and that, that breaking out of a molded confinement from school, from family, from parents, from um, expectations of society, wherever you pick that stuff up, even mentors, whom people who mean well, sometimes kind of push you in a direction um, well intended that doesn't really fit you he's talking about things sometimes paths don't suit you you know and you got to really trust yourself but in order to trust yourself you got to know yourself in order to know yourself you got to be free to meet yourself you can't be in a cage like animals at the zoo is the vibes he's that's what he's sharing with me this is very fascinating because I didn't expect this and I feel like I'm understanding you and some of that real erotic stuff that you did early on that, you know, I was like 11 or something at that time. So was it, that's not really erotic time. Wasn't really erotic time in my life. I don't know about you guys, but so it kind of felt like naughty or something like bad, like bad, like I shouldn't be interested in that anyway and stuff. And so right now as an adult woman, I'm having this understanding about what the energy that you bring forward 
for your fans, your fam in that regard and what when people are connected to that those genres and those um those songs those lyrics those videos those movies it's it's because of that desire to be free to break free and a deep desire to love yourself and your body that's a big deal let's not lose that so prince you would agree with that correct is that am i describing this accurately he says yes for the, yeah yeah for the most part and so that must be the connection for women to you then He's like, you know, he's like, and and because I'm sexy, and I, and for me, I want to say you're a sexy MF. Is that would you would that would that be accurate? <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist that. Kind of funny, right? All right, thank you. Wow. Okay, so that's just the very beginning. The attraction energy, the magnetism is very strong with fans. I know. So talk to me about this. Is a great question. Oh my gosh, this is a brilliant question. Talk to me about, the, is there a difference then between people who discovered your work early on or who understand the depth of your library of, 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 of music, of lyrics, of songs, of all the different albums, all throughout all the genres of your, um, I'm going to say genres because there's so much different influence in all of the work that you have in each album could be some of them are kind of connected from what I understand, but some of them could be totally different aspects of you. People who loved you and followed you while you were uh, in the human body. Is there a difference between that and people who discovered you after you died? Like, do you feel a difference in your connection or relationship with people based on how long they knew you or if they knew you as a person or if they just know you from the afterlife, like when they discovered you? Do you feel a difference? Can you talk about that? He says there's definitely a power in the messages, isn't there? The messages that people receive and, and what they choose to focus on is what he's saying. Okay, so you're not gonna answer this directly, are you? No, I will. He says, no, I will. I will. Yeah, there's a difference. There's a difference. But it's not what you think. There's not a difference. One's better than the other. There's a difference because those people who open their hearts to me now, they know me in the way that God, Creator, as Bridget would say, God, creator, source, knows me. They know me in without, without predefinement, without predetermination, without expectation of how to feel me or know me. However, they got to get over their own guilt because there is some guilt among people who found me, discovered me, or were drawn to me after I died. Because when the body isn't alive, it feels like there's no right to have a relationship with someone in the afterlife. There's really no right. But that's not true. That's, well, that's a myth, people. That's a lie. Knowing someone in the afterlife is as profound of a legacy as knowing someone when they're alive in a body. And that's, that's the truth. That's the truth. I love my fans. I have always loved my fans. I have always loved people who love my music. I mean, I do it for the fans. I can feel the love when I was on stage. I could feel it pouring at me, just pouring on me like, like rain, like just pouring at me, just, just coming at just, oh. I could feel the power of the love that people would give to me. And when I'm on stage, that's what keeps me going. That's what, that's what carries me through the performance. Even if my hip is killing me, I can continue because I feel their love. And love is encouragement. And love is like this renewing, constantly renewing, recharging power. And that in your human body and that as a human, as a person-to-person -person experience is so incredible and amazing. So love is just such a power. And I would say that the fans, the people who knew me when I was a person 
and had that relationship with me. Even if I never met you, I didn't have to meet you to know you, to feel your love. I felt your love all the time. I felt your love all the time. I could feel you all the time. And, and especially he's showing me like live performances. Like he's just like, bring it, bring it, ooh, bring it. And he's, he's sharing such, I hope you guys can really feel this. He's sharing such an intimacy when he's performing, like performing like just an intimate connection like it's just you in the audience whether you're in the third row or the 117th section g feeling it feeling it feeling it because he's like that's when you transcend the human body that's when you free yourself from the human body and you're feeling the vibration of the music and you're just in this intimate flow like he's just like there's so much excitement like he's just like it's just it's ecstasy like talk about erotic that's that's the ultimate connection that just incredible incredible flow of energy just oh god he's just he loves he's loving it and he really feels he's trying to give me this expression like literally feels intimate connections with everyone there could be thousands of people and he feels every intimate speck of light he looks out at you and like sees like literally like raindrops it looks like raindrops it looks like water that's like kind of shimmering in the sunlight that's what it looks like to me so that's how he describes it I mean, i'm not trying to compare it to purple rain i'm just saying that's literally he looks out and he sees these droplets of light water on each person and that's just such a beautiful he's like now that's god right there that's god that's god and the love that's flowing just so it's like a fountain. It just keeps spraying all over everybody then. He's like, it's just a cycle, cycle. So the live performances are a really big deal. Can you talk about, okay, so you've talked about fans and different times when they became fans. That there's really, there's just a, a different difference for them maybe, but not really for you. He's like, no, there's no, there's really not. Like he doesn't say no, but he's like, there's no discernment. Like he doesn't, he won't, he won't even address any kind of difference. There's no difference because assuming that there's a difference means there's separation. And he's saying, I'm not going to get in the middle of that. They argue about all that stuff. Let them, let them have their own chaos amongst themselves. I'm not going to get involved in that. He like, he doesn't even want to validate that, that silliness with even a response. That's how he feels. He's like, I'm not dealing with that. I don't got time for that. Hmm. Neither do you. He knows that I feel how I feel about that too. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. So can you talk about the actual music then in the albums? Like if I listen to you, if I'm like having a down day and I'm listening to you in the kitchen and I start jamming, you know, just because I do. I loved your dancing. Like that's the cool part for me. I like just loved your moves, man. Your moves. He's like, I know. He's like, girls got moves. I'm like, yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> okay hello all right so <laughs> this is like so gonna be public like on youtube that's all right this is a real me you guys hey <laughs> having a conversation with my best soul from prince <laughs> oh my gosh okay so talk about the music i know that the music is so powerful i know you've said in other videos that i've done that music is your church you said that lyrics are the legacy lyrics are medicine music is medicine music is vibration you've talked about how music is intuition it connects how when we listen to the music how does that really connect us to you i mean really how can we know because i think people wonder all the time they're like it feels like you're singing right to them i mean how how can we get that uh, how can we accept that that that's true and is that true like are you singing right to me in that moment <laughs> talk, talk about the the music and the frequency and the importance of the music and he's like music is he says he says i would say it in human human terms so your brain gets it he says i'd say music is a legacy it's my legacy so if you want to know me know my music and uh, there are parts of me you wouldn't like as a person either he says like you wouldn't like all parts of me there's parts of me that would maybe be annoying to you he says maybe habits i'd have that would bug you as a person like if we were in a relationship you know if we're friends or what have you and he says so some of my music isn't going to be for you and that's okay but it, if you want to know me know my music listen to my music feel the story that comes through listen to the words 
learn about contrast because some of the lyrics are intentionally contrasting. They make you think, they're like, well, wait a minute, what's this, what's that? Don't take it for face value. It's not directly, it's not always a direct, this is what it is, take it as it is. You, know, you get what you, you get what you get kind of thing. Look beyond, let yourself feel the meaning. Let yourself feel the message that you are getting for yourself at that time that you're listening to that music and you can get different stuff at different times. That's what I did. And he's like, he's showing me like listening to like soul. I don't know who these people are. There's like this guy that's really soul. And he's like this African-American guy with big hair, really big hair, like crazy hair. And he's like, yeah, uh, yeah, uh. I can't even understand. I can hear it kind of half is what he's saying, but he's like, yeah, you get in there, there and it just moves you. He's like, it moves you. It just shakes you in a way that, you can't hold on to pain. You can't hold on to um, criticism. You can't judge yourself in those moments. It just shakes you and, and clears everything out. Just gets you whew, a fresh start, you know, like walking out in the rain, you get pouring down rain and you're just, you know, got to dry yourself off and start again, you know, kind of thing. And he's like, that's what I would, that's the energy that comes through with the music, specifically with the music, with the songs. Okay, we could spend a long time talking about this. I'm trying to think if there was another. Um, oh, I wanted to ask. I did talk about this in another video with you, but I want to keep asking to see if we can get some more information about it. How can people connect with you now? Like, is there fan mail or something? Is there like spirit mail that could be sending you love letters or? <laughs> and how, so how can they reach you and how do you reply back? How does that work? You talk about that because I know it's different for different personalities, different spirit energy on the other side. So that's what I've experienced myself. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? He's like, you can answer this question, Bridget. I'm like, I know half the stuff I ask you, I could just respond to as a psychic and a medium and all through the experiences I've had. But I, people need to hear from you. They're your fans. They love you. So give them something. And he says, um, I come a lot in dreams. You're not making that up, he says. I come a lot in dreams, a lot. He says, it's, he says it's so easy to just slip right into the dream state and share, connect with somebody. He says, but it's not what you think it is either. So if, you, if we're having a dinner and I get mad at you or something in, my, in your dream, don't take it for face value. It's just like music. Don't take it for face value, okay? Don't take it for face value. It might have to be something really intense that I show up for so that you believe it, so you can remember it, and then you believe that, oh my gosh, it was so intense. So he's like, don't focus on the content, focus on the experience. Don't focus on content, focus on the experience. That's how you get it. You gotta stop being so specific. Like, I have to have it this way, and the only way Prince would contact me is if he actually knew me as a person. He's like, that's not true. That's not true. If that's the case, Jesus wouldn't be talking to nobody, ever. Because you guys didn't know him as a person. <sighs> okay, Prince, thanks for bringing Jesus in. Prince loves Jesus, just so you know. I mean, he always, he talks about Jesus a lot when we talk personally. <clears throat> so, okay, so we got to let go of our expectations and you talk to people a lot and you connect with people in their dreams a lot, right? Yes. I connect with people through my music. I say that over and over again, but that's the truth. He's saying that's exactly how I connect. You wanna connect with me? Feel, take a second, just sit for a minute, just quiet the craziness and feel into yourself and let a song come up. Let a song bubble up. Then listen to that. That's your message. It's not hard. Bridget's right, it's not, it's real simple. It's not complicated. I talk about that all the time, you guys. It's not hard. Talking to spirit, talking to afterlife, not hard. The hardest part is getting out away from yourself, like your own expectations and your own former belief systems. And, oh, I can't connect with Prince because if I believe in Jesus, and then Prince isn't really like Jesus because there's a hierarchy in the afterlife because I was taught that. And that's not true. Not true. That's not true. There's no hierarchy. There's no hierarchy. God is each of us. We are oneness. You've heard me talk about this before. I might get a little preachy here, but I cannot, I gotta say that. Okay, Prince? He's like, you go ahead, you go, you tell him. <laughs> like he's like, 
be my guest. <laughs> All right, so music, song, let the song come up. Let it come up. Dreams, it connects a lot in dreams, a lot in dreams, a lot, a lot. Okay, those are the two things. That's new. You never really talked about the dream state before. Thanks for talking about that. A lot of people do talk about that. That's a really common way for people in the afterlife, loved ones, um, to connect with you. So if you have a conversation with your dad who's in heaven, then you had a visitation with your dad in heaven. Again, it's not about the content. That's beautiful, Prince. Actually, you know, I got to write that down because that's that's freaking fantastic phrase. It's, you, it's not about the expectations, it's about the experience. How are you feeling? You gotta trust the sensing, the feeling from it. Don't diagnose, don't go diagnostic, don't analyze spiritual stuff because your brain can't do it. It's not capable, it doesn't have those skills. It's gonna mess it up, you're gonna think too much about it and then you're gonna be, you're gonna talk yourself out of the fact that you are spiritual, you are intuitive and you had a beautiful connection with your loved one in the afterlife. You're gonna talk yourself out of that. Why would you do that? So Prince is right, all right? So it's not about the content, it's about the experience, all right? It's about the experience, all right? Thank you, I didn't expect this to be that long. Well, when we get together, we talk, we talk. Now this is really a conversation because you, you're seeing this real comfort level because we know each other really well. Like I know him really well, it's easy to talk to him. And so I get real comfortable, let my guard down and you know, be real casual. So I hope you've enjoyed. This conversation with Prince in the afterlife where he talks specifically to his fans about his relationship and connection with you and why you are so drawn to him and whether or not you were a fan from the beginning, whether you came on board during Purple Rain, whether you discovered him just in the last year of his life, it does not matter to him or whether you discovered him after he died. There is no judgment about any of that. All right. And so I hope we've been able to um, respond to some really important questions I think that Prince fans, fam, would have. So this is Bridget. Thank you for being here at Above Life Channel. If you like this video, give it a like. If you've got some comments or additional questions that we could chat with Prince about in a future video, go ahead and put them in the comments below. That's totally fine and encouraged. And be sure that you share this with others that you feel could really benefit from understanding this, especially other Prince fans. They deserve to have this information for themselves and to feel the vibrations of the purple one in the afterlife too. Thank you so much for being here.